My name is Ty French, and this is my podcast. That's why it's called the Ty French Podcast. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the Ty French Podcast. My name is Ty French, and this is my podcast. And that's why it's called the Ty French Podcast. Today, we have a special announcement. Brrr. Well, if everything goes to, <laughs> goes to plan and I don't have any technical issues, which there's a huge probability. But today is the first episode of the Ty French Podcast that will be fully recorded on video and will be available on the new Thai French podcast YouTube channel. So if you are someone who likes to have your YouTubes or am I okay? Your podcasts streamed. Okay. Am I okay? If you are someone who likes to watch a podcast versus just listen to it, then head on over to the Thai French podcast YouTube channel and hit subscribe. Feel free to watch. I am beyond nervous about this. Um, if you're watching this and I'm looking in a ton of different places, it's because I have like two different monitors on me and I'm insecure and I got to see what I'm looking like. So I'm not always looking directly into the lens. Also, I don't know if it's weird if I'm always directly looking into the lens, like if I'm like looking into your soul, you know? So, you know, I'm going to figure it out. This is a, this is a huge trial run. We'll see if this video portion even makes it online. Let's pray for no technical difficulties. Yeah, I'm nervous. The whole reason I started the podcast was because I have been an influencer for so long and I just didn't always like that my job had to be around like getting up, getting dressed, getting ready and like shooting and taking selfies. And so I started the podcast because I thought it'd be so fun. It's a different medium. It's just audio. And now if you don't do video with a podcast, it's irrelevant and you got to do TikTok clips and the reels and all this. So I'm keeping up with the girls. Um, I'm recording now, but I will say this is probably the most I've ever put myself out there in my career because, you know, I can make myself look cute in a photo. I feel very confident with my shooting abilities and not that I don't think I'm cute. I'm just like, no one likes themselves on video for an hour talking. That's why not everyone is on TV. That's not what I signed up to do, but I'm doing it for you. I'm doing it for the Thai French podcast listeners, my little rats, my little Thai babies, my little tyrants, my French fries. I'm I'm throwing out names that people have suggested and seeing if one <laughs> sticks. None of them have quite stuck yet, but I do love Thai babies. I love tyrants. Like, you know, like we're like, you know what a tyrant is. I don't have to explain it to you guys, but I kind of like tyrants. Like we're all little tyrants. Because feral rat, here's the thing with rats and like the rat pack, Thai's rat pack, whatever, is that is not something that is individual to the Thai French podcast. The rat movement goes well beyond us. The rat movement is a huge thing on TikTok and whatever. And so while I do call myself, you know, camp rat, the rat king, I'm a feral rat, that is not just us. That is not just the Thai French podcast community. So I want something specific and I kind of like tyrants because it kind of gives off the same energy as like a feral rat. Like we're tyrants just out here, like <laughs> fucking up the streets. So I do like that. Let me know if you guys like that one because Thai babies, I like Thai babies as well, but also I ain't trying to get sued by Thai. So tyrants, I don't know. Let me know if you guys like it. There were a few other ones. I'll, you know, I'll throw them out here or there. We'll see which one sticks, but let me know what you guys think of that one. Um, anyways, yes, we're on video. I hope you guys check it out. Go subscribe to the channel. So all this hard work is not for nothing. Anyways, let's move on to a little life update. Also, like I said, if I'm looking at a ton of different places, I don't know. I'm I'm testing out which one I'm supposed to look at. Am I supposed to look at the monitor or am I supposed to look at the lens? Or do I look away? I don't know. Anyways, um, little life update for you guys. Not much, honestly. Um, last week. Well, so first off, I wanted to say that um, on last week's episode, I forgot to mention in my like life update that I went to the What We Said live show in Irvine and I got to meet a ton of you guys. 
And it was so fun. And watching JC and Chelsea from the What We Said podcast do their live show, this is the second one I've been to, was just so exciting. And they are so amazing. And I'm so proud of them. And they absolutely crushed it. I got to meet a lot of you guys. It was so fun. You guys just really made my ego grow. And I felt like I was a celebrity. It was amazing. But um, I just wanted to give a shout out to my girls, JC and Chelsea. I'm so proud of you guys. And I'm so thankful that you guys made me start a podcast. And I can't wait to hopefully do a live show one day. So I had to, had to get that in there. But what did I do this last week? So... I went to a House of Creed, which is like a fragrance company that I'm obsessed with. I went to an event for them. And then right after, one of my friends was like, wait, I have a last minute ticket to the Chloe Bailey concert if you want to come. And so I was like, I mean, I never said no to a free concert and I'm not going to start today. That's for damn sure. Especially to the sister of Disney's Little Mermaid live action remake. So I went and here's the thing. I'm going to try and stay positive. I, uh, she is so talented and she's such a good singer. She's so beautiful. I think there's room to grow there. Also, keep in mind, I never once listened to her album. So going to a concert where you don't know the music is like, what are you doing there? You don't belong there. And that's actually on me because if I went to a concert that was a small for like a newer artist that I loved and I knew all their songs and all their lyrics and the bitch next to me was being a little prude and being annoying and stuck up and being like, I don't know the song and like not dancing, I'd punch him in the face because that would be ruin my experience. However, I was that person at the show and I sincerely apologize to the community around me at this show because I was just standing there. However, it was, it was shocking. I could not see a thing. Like it was literally just like a flat ground and the venue was just not right. So uh, I'll, I'll give her a pass there. I couldn't really see, but anyways, it was good. She sounds amazing. It was cute. It was the last leg of her tour. I definitely need to listen to her album now. She's so talented. And guess who walks in and stands right in front of us? Alton Mason, the bitch at the Met Gala two days before that, who had the outfit from Karl Lagerfeld that I need to wear to my wedding that I also went to high school with. So I felt like I really manifested that moment from the Met Gala episode, I really, you know, I was just hyping him up too much in that look. And then boom, he was standing right next to me. So that was cool. Then at the end of the concert, her encore, um, Hallie Bailey was in the front and she sang like the first half of her encore song. I don't even know what song it was. It was like a cover for sure. But it was so moving. It was so beautiful. It was so stunning. And if my sister or my sibling ever had the fucking nerve to outsing me during the encore of my own concert, that bitch is getting a punch in the face. <laughs> it was like, you know, Chloe Bailey is an amazing singer. Like, I don't think one of them is better than the next, but like, Hallie's about to be the little mermaid. Like, she's like really thriving. Like, Chloe, this is your moment. And then during your encore, you give the microphone to your sister and she outshone you. I won't lie. As a viewer, I was blessed. As a viewer, I was thankful and excited for that moment. However, it was a choice for you and your team. But anyways, it was really cool to see Hallie perform live for free the week before the Disney Little Mermaid premiere. Speaking of, the Disney Little Mermaid premiere was just last night, I believe. And wow, it's getting amazing reviews. She looks absolutely breathtaking. Something about Hallie Bailey, like she looks like a mermaid. Like even before she was announced, like she has this like, and I do not, I mean this in the highest of praise, but like she looks like a fish kind of like she, her, like eyes are further apart. And like, they're a little, I don't know what it is about her, but like she is literally the perfect person for this role. I will not hear any Hallie Bailey slander in The Little Mermaid here. Um, it's getting such good reviews. She looked so amazing on the red carpet. I cannot wait to see it. Here's one thing I will say, and I think I've said this before on the podcast. I hate when people tease out things too early. Like the premiere was last night, but don't come out for like three weeks. I'm, I, we, they've been promoting this movie for months already. I want to see the damn movie. Let me see it. So I'm excited to see that at the end of the month, but I'm glad it's getting good reviews. Um, she looked amazing. And yeah, I just felt like I needed a touch on that little piece of history. Then, oh, on Thursday, I had to go to the doctor and I had a physical for the first time in like years. And I don't know about you guys, but like growing up Mormon, growing up a Boy Scout, like 
I always hated getting physicals. I had to get a physical like every year for scout camp and whatever. And something about an old doctor touching up on your junk, making you cough naked, like alone, your mom's in the room. There is nothing worse. There's nothing worse. Like it, I'm traumatized from it. And so whenever I go to the doctor and they tell me I need to have physical, I'm just like, <laughs> luckily I'm I'm getting better. I go to like an all gay doctor, like literally everyone in there is gay. And so like it made me weirdly feel a little bit better, even though if they're gay and they're looking at my junk, I w- you would think I would want a straight woman to look at my junk because d- d- not in the same pool of likability. But no, there's it, it, it was fine, whatever. Anyways, all went good. Don't know why I'm sharing that. But um, (laughs) then Cinco de Mayo on Friday, I woke up to the amazing notification that the Thai French podcast has been downloaded 250,000 times. Quarter of a milli, bitch. If you follow me on Instagram, you already heard me say that. But I just... I'm so thankful. So thank you guys so much. That is such a huge number. And I've only been doing this for, I think, six or seven months. And yeah, wow, that's just amazing. So shout out to all of you guys. Even if you've only ever listened to one episode, it seriously means a lot to me. And share it with your friends. Post it on your story. Let's get the Thai French Podcast out there, ladies and gentlemen and non-binary community and all gender expressions. <laughs> I sound like Rihanna in that one interview that she had where she was like trying so hard to be politically correct, <laughs> but she did not know what she was saying. Anyways, moving on. On Cinco de Mayo after I, I went out with some friends, but drum roll, please. Round of applause. I didn't drink this weekend. Clap if you care. Awesome. So yeah, I went out on Friday and I went out on Saturday, but with no alcohol. And as you guys are well aware, the rat king, this feral rat, that doesn't happen very often. So yeah, I felt, I feel really good this week. I feel rested. I feel rejuvenated, ready to film the podcast. I was just like, you know, I need to, I need to take a break this weekend. And you know, I've been wanting to start two podcast episodes a week and I've been wanting to start filming them. And so I was just like, I have a lot to do and I need to be feeling my best and look at my best. So I didn't drink. I did that for you guys. So you're welcome. Um, Also, if you see the spray tan on my hands, I'm going to need you to mind your business because there's no way around it. I try very hard at fading it and the fingers are just going to be pale. So notice how my hands are going to be here for most of the time, but I talk with my hands a lot. I don't know. Anyways, um, if you guys are just listening to this, then you guys don't care. But uh, (laughs) I feel so awkward. Like I feel so much more self-aware of myself recording the podcast also on video because I've recorded them before, but only I knew I was only using it for clips. But now I'm like, you know, I got to make sure I'm like sat up. Normally I record the podcast literally like at 11 PM at night in my pajamas. So this is new for me and I feel really awkward. So if I sound a little different than usual, that's why. But anyways, before I move on to the contents of this week's episode, the song of the week this week, I actually have two that I wanted to share. I'm so obsessed. They're both by the same artist. Satellite by BB Rexa and Snoop Dogg. Also, since it's the same artist, I'm giving you two songs of the week. You're welcome. They're on the same album. Seasons by BB Rexa and Dolly Parton. We are out here sleeping on... Miss BB Reptar. Like, she really dropped an album with one of the hit songs of the summer. Uh, isn't it David Guetta or Calvin Harris? I don't know, one of the two. Um, I'm good, yeah, I'm feeling all right. And also, on the same album, Snoop Dogg and Dolly Parton. So that's iconic behavior, that's legendary behavior, and we need to stop sleeping on her. So these songs, I heard like clips of when the album released and like, I didn't really think much of it. And then later this weekend, I was like, wait, she dropped an album and I remember Snoop Dogg was on it, but I didn't remember the song. So it was like, I got to listen to it. Um, I'm obsessed. I love it. It's so good. It's like poppy, but also just like feel good. Windows down, PCH, top off Rita, the Wrangler. It's so good. And the song with Dolly Parton is just like, so beautiful. Dolly Parton is literally an angel that we do not deserve on this earth, but we have anyways, and I'm grateful for it. So yeah, so I highly recommend looking into those two songs and all of just BB's BB. I literally almost called her BB Reptar. BB Rexa's 
<laughs> new album. It is called BB by BB Rexa. It's so good. It's catchy. It's fun. Satellite on there and Seasons are my two favorite. And they're beautiful songs. Definitely check them out. I'm not much of like a doll. I mean, I'm, I'm a dolly girl, but like I don't like listen to her tunes, you know, on the regular. But this is a tune that definitely will be added to my regular playlists. Anyways, so this week is the first week that we have two episodes of the Thai French podcast. <laughs> I say with fear in my eyes. So I'm going to be trying out, you know, maybe some new formulas as we continue through this transition. But Wednesdays are now going to be a weekly pop culture recap episode. And then Fridays are either going to be, you know, like an interview, a totally random episode, uh, you know, Q&A, an advice column coming soon. Stay tuned on my Instagram stories at Thai French Podcast. Um, and, you know, things like that. But I wanted to do a weekly pop culture. So those are going to be Wednesdays now. And then Fridays, you'll also get another episode. This Friday will be the first... Friday episode of the Typhoon Podcast. So stay tuned for that. I'm excited. It's going to be a QA. and a If you have any questions that you want me to answer, hurry and send me a DM over on at Ty French Podcast so I make sure to answer it. Um, I'll be recording that very soon. I did a QA and a on my personal Instagram story at Ty French the other day and already got a lot of good questions. So um, I believe for the pop culture segments now weekly, it's going to be a little Thai pop. I'm going to narrow it down, I think, to Ty's top three pop culture moments from the week. That way we like, you know, it's a formula. We always know what we're going to get. And then, you know, if there's a lot happening that week, it forces me to narrow it down to be more specific. And, you know, we have more time to go deeper into these issues. There's so much noise on happening in the world. Like you don't need to know every little thing that happens between every little housewife or every this or every tweet or every celebrity or whatever. So I'm going to be narrowing it down to Ty's top three pop culture moments of the week. And this week, we've got some good ones. This week was actually like weirdly slow for pop culture. It wasn't, it wasn't. Um, maybe it just, it, it was slow for people I care about. <laughs> so the stories that we have, like I'm not personally um, involved in any of them. I don't have a, uh, a horse in the race, as they say. So anyways, but... Let's get into it. I've been rambling for way too long. I don't know. I'm nervous, guys. I feel like I'm, I don't know. Ah! The first story, obviously, we have to talk about. This isn't like a small story by any means. That's why I take back what I said about it being a slow week. But I just literally could care less um, or couldn't care less. Is it could care less or couldn't care less? I'm always very confused by that. Anyways, King Charles III had his coronation ceremony this weekend. Um, before I get into this, let me just say that my knowledge on this topic is 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 basically given to me by the producers at Netflix um, for The Crown. That is my extension of knowledge of the royal family, and that is probably where it will stay. No, I do want to do a full deep dive episode into the royal family, sort of a royal families for dummies, royal family, royal family for dummies, you know? I really, I really want to know what's happening behind closed doors. I want to know what's happening in there. I need to know the relations of who's related to who, whose cousin is who, who got kicked out of what family. And then I, I, I need to know all that. I know like the gist of it from the crown, but don't you worry. One of these days, Thai French Podcast is going to have a full deep dive into the crown and they should be worried. They should be sending me cease and desist letters because I'm going to get to the bottom of a lot of crap that they've been trying to cover up. Anyways, um, that is not this episode. We're just going to be talking about the coronation, but I just wanted to say that, you know, maybe some of my facts might be off. I don't know. I literally only know this family because of the crown. And also, before I get into anything, I need to just state Team Diana all the way. Princess Diana, R.A.P. Princess Diana, you are forever in our hearts. And we will not forget what that family did to you. On that note, I do not feel bad about speaking negatively about them at all, <laughs> because I fully believe that they had something to do with the death of Princess, Princess Diana. Anyways, um, so King Charles III had his coronation ceremony this last weekend on May 6th at Westminster Abbey. This comes about eight months after the passing of Queen Elizabeth II. Um, how's it been eight months since the Queen died? Mm -hmm. I'm very concerned. For how fast time is moving. I 
am disgusted with my life because I have done nothing with it for the last eight months because I'm pretty sure eight months ago I was also sitting on this couch in this exact spot when I found out she had passed. May she rest in peace. God save the queen. Um, yeah, okay. So eight months has gone past. Anyways, after the coronation ceremony at Westminster Abbey, the king boarded the gold stage coach and returned to Buckingham Palace to appear with the other royals on the balcony before cheering crowds. It is estimated that this crowning ceremony will cost between 63 and $125 million. So... Yeah, that's hard because I need this is where the research needs to come in because I'm like, I don't know how much the inauguration costs. Ooh, maybe let's look that up. How much does an inauguration cost? Oh, okay. Never mind. I was gonna talk a whole lot of shit <laughs> about how taxpayers in Great Britain are paying for this. But this only happens every uh, the last one happened 70 years ago. Our inauguration happens every four years and it's $100 million. So everything I was just about to shit on about the king not caring about his taxpayers, I'm looking in the mirror and whatever I'm saying to them is bouncing off of them. I'm, I'm rubber their glue. Whatever I say bounces off of me, them sticks to me and goes to you. I don't know the saying, but you know what I'm saying? Speaking of inauguration, something that I found interesting was that no U.S. president has ever been to a royal inauguration of the British Empire. I don't know however you say that. A British coronation. Um, they always send a special envoy instead to represent the nation. This year it was Jill Biden and her daughter. And Dr. Jill Biden. And let me just say, Mama ate. Mama ate the house down boots slay. Like, she looked so gorgeous. She was in this gorgeous blue. I can't put the photo up. Anyways, she looked gorgeous in this, like, blue number. I don't know who the designer was, but it was so chic. It was so regal. It was so timeless. She had blue gloves to match. Her daughter looked absolutely stunning. They looked sickening. I'm honestly glad that they went instead of Joe. Um, we love Joe, but boy, that sleepy Joe. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. And also... Yeah, it's like, why would he go? I'll get into this a little bit later as well. But like, okay, so we as Americans used to be a part of the British Empire, whatever, the British monarchy, the Great Britain. Um, and then we ran away for religious persecution, whatever, religious freedom. And then we have the 4th of July to celebrate our independence and becoming our own country. Need I remind you, that was not that long ago. That was in the 1700s, I believe. So, why am I going to go celebrate the king? 200 years later, I just ran away from your ass. We had a whole American Revolution from your ass. So, I honestly respect that the presidents don't go because I feel like that is like going to the birthday party of your high school bully. And, or are we the bully? I don't know. Anyways, it would be weird if they go, I think. But I'm glad Jill went. And she looked absolutely sickening. Another thing that I found interesting when watching the coverage and seeing all the photos is that the chair that they sit in for the coronation is the exact same chair that has been used for the coronations since the year 1300. Um... That's so long. <laughs> that is absolutely insane. I don't know how it's still sitting up straight, but I'm glad that they keep on tradition. And I think they use the same like crown and scepter, the thingy. I don't know. It looks like a drag race finale <laughs> to be honestly, but when they're not being used, like the crown's only used for the coronation. The king doesn't like walk around wearing that crown or to like events or anything. That is the coronation crown only. And when it, all that stuff and all that jewelry is not being used for the coronation. It is at, I believe, the London Tower or something like that. It's like a museum that you can go visit um, in London. And I've actually been before. And it is actually so cool. I'm not like the hugest like person into royals, but ever since the crown, I can like get into it. And Jose from Totally Random and I went to London with the Four Seasons um, in like 2019. It was insane. It was so cool. 
to see all the jewelry, the crown, like the chair, like everything all in person. I mean, now it's maybe not as cool, but like before that, like the only person we'd seen it on was like Queen Elizabeth and her coronation was just like so iconic and she was so young and the footage is so beautiful. It was the first one that was televised. And so to see it all in person was like so cool. Seeing it all on TV this time around, Mama, King Charles, you should have put a filter on there. You should have made it look a little bit more vintage. You should have shot it in film or something like Euphoria, a Euphoria-esque style coronation. Um, maybe throw it in the Teza app. I don't know. Because the colors and the quality, I've been saying this for a while. Good quality cameras have ruined movies and like rom-coms and everything. And especially this coronation ceremony because like no one, it was too clear. It's too clear. It, the colors are too vibrant. You look like a clown. You look like Party City. It's cringy. It doesn't, watching the Queen's coronation feels like this like moment in history. It's like timeless. It's was so beautiful. And then watching it now in like the year 2023, it's like, ooh, so out of touch. And they just look like they're in Party City costumes. Watching the footage of the Queen's, it's like so vintage. And like all those pieces are obviously vintage. They've been around for thousands of years. And like the crowns and the jewelry or whatever, like filmed the way that the Queens was, was like so stunning. Shooting that kind of diamonds and those crowns and those costumes and like the drapes and the robes or whatever with today's cameras, it's giving clownery. It's giving Halloween costume. It's giving Madame Tussauds wax figures. It really wasn't giving. It was not giving at all. But anyways, in his opening statement, the king said, I come not to be served, but to serve. Let me just let that, let me um, just say that is the best housewives tagline I've ever seen in my entire life. Dun, 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 dun. I come not to be served, but to serve. Dun, 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 dun. Like that is legendary. That is literally a Housewives tagline, and you cannot tell me anything differently. Um, so congrats, King Charles, on joining the Real Housewives of um, London. <laughs> but most of the members of the royal family were there. Um, you know, King Charles III, Queen Consort Camilla. She is not Queen Camilla, and she will never be Queen Camilla. She's Queen's Consort Camilla. And even that, I'm being nice by saying, um, <clears throat> mistress. Um... Not King Charles and Camilla being the Tom Sandoval and Raquel Levis of the United Kingdom. Wow. I just like put those two and two together. Anyways, so um, Queen Consort Camilla, King Charles III, the entire Wales family was present at the coronation. Prince George acted as one of the pages of honor during the service. Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis were in attendance as well, traveling with Kate, William, and George in the carriage procession back to Buckingham Palace after the ceremony. The Duke of Sussex, aka Harry, was among the congregation as well, although he kept a low profile with the Duchess of Sussex, aka Meghan Markle, remained at home in California with Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet. Princess Lilibet, wow, what a name. Page Six reported that despite being in a cheerful mood during his father's crowning, Harry did not see or speak to his family outside of the ceremony at all. And then it was being reported that he was invited. They had like a dinner afterwards or like a luncheon, just a very intimate one, you know, celebrating the coronation. And it's being reported that he did not stay for it and that he immediately jetted back to California. However, it was his son, Archie's birthday. So they were having like a little intimate birthday party. Do I think that they could have scheduled the four-year-old's birthday party at a later date, perhaps one day later, so that his father could go to the king's coronation, his father? Yes, I do believe that. I do believe that it was not a scheduling issue. I do believe that was an excuse. However, I don't blame him. And I think it's great and nice that he went to the coronation at all. I do wish Meghan Markle would have been there. I don't know if she was invited. I don't know if the invitation was extended to her, but she says that she stayed home to protect her peace. I get that 100% after all that she's been through. I just think, I don't know. This is what I'm saying. I got to go on a deep dive on the royal family because I see so many like differing of opinions. And when they first, you know, came out with like the Oprah interview, I feel like everyone was on their side. And then their, their latest interviews and the book Spare that he wrote... It's giving like pick me energy. It's giving like victim energy, which you are a victim 
But to a certain extent, I don't know. It was just like, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't go through it. I can't imagine growing up like that or being the first black woman to enter that family or that dynasty. So it's not my place to say anything. I need to know more. But I do wish Megan was there as one of the first black royals there is in history. Like it just would have been iconic if she was there. But I feel like she made the right choice. Harry definitely did not get the royal treatment when he was there. He didn't speak to anyone. He didn't even talk to his brother. He wasn't like in any of the like ceremony. He was kind of sat behind, um, I can't remember the princess's name, but um, Queen Elizabeth's sister. He was sat behind her. People are joking because like literally her feather was covering him up the entire time. So, you know, he came. I, I think it would have caused more drama if he didn't come. Allegedly, um, King Charles III was upset that he didn't stay for the luncheon. Um, and it's being said that King Charles raised a toast to his grandson, Archie, as he wished him a happy fourth birthday. Oh my God, I totally was guessing that he was four. Um, <laughs> wished him a happy fourth birthday um, wherever he was during the intimate family gathering on Saturday. Um, the 74-year-old monarch paid tribute to the birthday boy as well as those that weren't there at Buckingham Palace immediately after his coronation, a source told the Daily Mail. Do I think he could have stayed? Absolutely. Do I think he should have stayed? Absolutely. Do I understand why he didn't stay? Absolutely. It's being told, however, that other people, I don't know if it's like members of the royal family or just like involved, that they were, had a sigh of relief that um, Harry did not attend the luncheon and that they don't know why he even bothered to come to London for the coronation, which I think that's just rude. That just proves Harry's point further of why they don't come and why they don't come around and how they feel unwanted. So I don't know. That's a tricky situation. My family is tricky. Everyone's family is tricky. Like families are tricky. Family relationships are tricky. I cannot even imagine when it's on that scale and it's that public, um, how to deal with that or how to process that. So good for him for going, honestly. Then that night, they had the coronation concert in London that Katy Perry, Lionel Richie, Andrea Bocelli, Freya Riddings, Nicole Scherzinger, I don't never know how to say that, Paloma Faith, Tiwa Savage, Ollie Murs, and Take That um, all performed for a crowd of approximately 20,000 people at Windsor Castle. So I love Katy Perry so much. You guys know this. I'm a kitty cat. She's been like my ride or die since I was in high school. Um... And so that was really the only reason I even tuned into this whole coronation thing, especially to the coronation concert. I normally would not care at all. But I love my girl Katie and I wanted to see her perform. She doesn't perform that often. So I thought it was interesting. I thought it was interesting that um, Lionel Richie, Katy Perry performed to very popular American artists once again, are performing at this concert. And not only are they American, then Ed Sheeran, one of the most famous artists from the UK, filled in for Katy Perry. On American Idol. Like, that that should be reversed. Like, Ed Sheeran should be performing and Katy Perry should be at American Idol. That's not making sense to me. People are saying that Ed Sheeran's denied, like, the invitation to perform. And then Ed Sheeran came out and said that he was never asked. So, case of he said, she said, I guess. I was dying that Katy Perry sang Like a Firework, which, need I remind you, the line that she sang in front of the king of England, like the 4th of July, like the 4th of July. Need I remind you what the 4th of July is? The 4th of July is the day to get freedom and declare our independence from England, the King of England. So like, was that on purpose? Was she, I don't think she was like trying to be like shady, but like mama, you went to the only, one of the only coronations we're going to see in our lifetimes. I guess we'll probably have another one. Um, and sang a song about fireworks at the 4th of July for American independence. I don't know why that's so funny to me. I think that is hilarious. And go for her for doing that, I guess. She sounded so good. I'm getting like mixed reviews on TikTok. I feel like half the people are saying that she sounded so good. Half the people are like, where's Katie? Like, this doesn't even sound like her or whatever. I need to remind you, your body changes after you have a child, in case you idiots didn't know that. And also, she's a woman. She's grown up. It's been years and years and years since she first started singing. Like, your voice changes. So it's it's not going to be the same Katy Perry that was singing California Girls or I Kissed a Girl. So I thought she sounded amazing. I love her. 
her outfit, she wore this like gold foiled, like huge ballroom dress. And it was so stunning. She seemed so happy to be there. She seemed just so excited. She was like, I brought my mom here and we're staying at Windsor Castle and I can't believe it. And I just, I love her. She seemed so pumped and you could tell this was like definitely like a huge career highlight for her. Lionel Richie also did so good. Um, I watched a little bit of his performance. I'm gonna be honest. I turned off the concert after Lionel. I like watched a little bit of Lionel, turned it off, waited until Katy Perry came on and then I watched it and then I turned it off after her. So I did not see anyone else perform. I've seen uh, clips of Nicole singing. Her voice is absolutely insane. She looked gorgeous. But um, I really only feel the need to comment on Lionel Richie and Katy Perry. But it was funny because then like they did like a pop in um, checking in on American Idol because that's on right now. And obviously Ed Sheeran and someone else is filling in for them as they're gone. Then King Charles and Queen Consort Camilla popped in and said hello and did like a cute little like cameo on American Idol. Which I'm just like, it was cute. It was fun. Kind of. Like, why is the King of England on his coronation night popping in on doing an appearance on American Idol? That's just giving kind of weird. Like, could it not have been the X Factor? A British, a British show? Also, like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's the only way that they could get Katy Perry and Lionel Richie to perform is if they agreed to do this little like cameo. It was like two seconds long. You could barely even understand what they were saying. I don't know. I just thought it was like a little cringy and unnecessary. Someone on Twitter started a rumor that there was like this guy in the filming in the background of the coronation that like looked like he had a wig and a prosthetic on, but he didn't, but he looked like it. And <laughs> it like became this like viral thing on TikTok. I mean, um, on Twitter that Meghan Markle snuck in to the coronation in full on disguise, which is literally the dumbest thing I've ever heard. But this guy does look like he was in disguise, but I just needed to debunk that for everyone who maybe fell for that rumor. The man pictured in that rumor is Sir Carl Jenkins, which is a legendary composer whose work was played during the ceremony of the coronation. So it was fun while it lasted, that little joke but it was not, in fact, Meghan Markle. Um, the other funny part of the coordination that I feel like everyone is making memes about now is Katy Perry not being able to find her seat. And that's just one of those things where it's like, okay, you are Katy Perry, one of the most famous women in the world, performing at one of the only inaugurations we will ever see for the King of England. And you still cannot find your seat. Like, you don't have an assistant there with you. You don't have help. Like, that was probably such a humbling moment for her. I'm glad she, like, got in on the joke and she, like, posted on Instagram or tweeted afterwards and was like, I found my seat, guys. Like, because everyone was like, um. And she was wearing, like, one of those, like, funky British hats, you know, like, how they wear. And she, like, could not see. She was walking around, like, uh, where do I go? Um, anyways, I just thought that was funny. But I feel like that's really all that you kind of missed at the coronation if you guys didn't watch, if you guys even care. I, you know, don't think he should have been crowned king. I think he should have abdicated, if I'm saying that word correctly. And it should have just gone to William and Kate. Because I fully believe that they had something to do with Princess Diana's death. And I'll take that to my grave. And he's just gross. He gives me the ick. How, 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 how has evil won in this scenario? Queen Consort Camilla seems like the nastiest wench I've ever seen. And watching her get crowned instead of Princess Diana was very painful. And she just had this look on her face and like, they immediately put the crown on her head and she was like immediately trying to fix her hair like this. And I'm like, bitch, this moment is not about your hair. This moment is not about how you look. This is supposed to be a religious ceremony for you guys and it just felt like, I don't know. She had this like smug look on her face as she was like, I did it. I'm like, no, Maleficent can't win. Like you are evil. I will say all the looks from the weekend were absolutely sickening. Um, I, you know, I don't know that much, but I was like definitely team Harry and Megan for so long. And then something about this weekend was really, it was a good look for William and Kate. Like I... I don't know much about them, but I need to look into them now. And she was kind of serving royal elegance. I cannot wait for her to be queen. Like, their kids looked so cute. Their outfits were so cool. I'm glad that Kate's outfit was, like, regal. Like, something you see in a museum. Like, a full-on queen, a princess. Like, 
heck yeah, like she was like, I am the next queen of England. Like, get ready. To where like everyone else, you know, was just in like, like Katy Perry was in this like gorgeous Vivian Westwood like suit, purple number. Um, Jill Biden was in this like very like elegant, cute thing that she would wear in America. Like it wasn't like super out there, but Kate looked sickening and she was kind of giving. The photo of her looking through the carriage, through the rain with that crown on, ah! Uh, I mean, stunning. I've never seen anything prettier. So... Yeah, I obviously long live the king. Don't wish harm on anyone, but I'm excited for another chapter. <laughs> um, without, you know, getting too problematic there, I guess. Okay, our next story. I posted on my Instagram story on the At Thai French podcast what pop culture moments you guys wanted me to talk about this week, and pretty much all of them involved this. And I was already planning on talking about it. I wasn't going to talk about it as elaborately, but I give you guys what you want. And here's the thing. We've talked about this multiple times here on the Thai French Podcast. You guys are fully aware that I'm not a um, self-proclaimed Swifty, if that's how you want to word it. Um, respect her. She's got some tunes in there. She is an amazing songwriter, amazing performer. I'm, she's growing on me. She's growing on me. Let me preface with that. She's growing on me. But I just need to preface that. Taylor Swift announces Speak Now, Taylor's version, at concert in Nashville over the weekend. Clap if you care. Um, I'm sure some of you clapped. And I love that for you. I love that for you. Because if like Lady Gaga or Beyonce or Katy Perry announced a new album, I'd be over here just ra raging against the machine. I'm happy. I'm excited to hear this. I feel like that is definitely one of her best albums. Those are one of the ones that I like. Like, I like her OG. I love Speak Now. I love, like, 1989. Like, those are, like, that's the Taylor I love. You know where she really lost me was um, Lover. When she came out with... I never really, like, didn't like Taylor. I still don't not like Taylor. But when she came out with me... All respect down the drain. All respect down the drain. Me, he, he... I'm the only one I need. You can't spell me without me. Um, that is a Sesame Street song. And it deserves jail time. And it deserves a jury. Uh, whoever told her to release that needs to be fired, unfriended, blocked, reported, and thrown in Alcatraz. <laughs> Like, that's one of the worst songs I've ever heard in my entire life. Sorry, I'm not trying to be mean. Um, I gotta be positive. Okay. Um, how do I how do I turn this around? I'm really excited for speaking. <laughs> I'm in a really silly, goofy mood, you guys. No, I really do. I am excited to hear this one. The album cover is gorgeous. Her eyes are a little dark in it, to be honest. It's not that well lit of a photo, but I I appreciate what she's going with. She's turning the other side and all of the the new um Taylor's versions albums that she's you know, reshot. I'm excited to hear this. I'm excited to see, you know, how she mixes it up. Maybe it'll sound a little bit different, a little bit more modern. Um, it's a great album. I will say, okay, let me, let me, let me bring this back up. Let me bring the spirits back up. Don't, don't hurt me. All you Swifties out there. So after she released me, I lost a lot of respect for her because I was just like, what is this? This is the biggest pop sellout song I've ever heard in my entire life. But this last weekend, she's gained some of my respect back and she has piqued my interest because two things, actually, that she really, she won some points with me over the weekend. Swift is reportedly now dating the 1975 frontman, Maddie Healy. Didn't see that one coming. Um, sources claim to the Sun that the pair are already madly in love despite only dating less than two months. An anonymous celebrity told gossip blog Dumois that the pair were set up by Swift's collaborator Jack Antonoff. Maddie Healy was seen in the VIP tent at Taylor Swift's concert Friday night in Nashville. Taylor and Maddie were seemingly mouthing secret messages to each other during their recent shows. During the Bad Blood Singers era tour stop in Nashville, she looked at the camera and mouthed, This is about you. You know who you are. I love you. While on stage, the cryptic moment was caught on video by her fans who quickly realized that the 1975 frontman Matt Healy had also mouthed those exact words during his May 3rd concert in the Philippines. Um, that's not a coincidence. That is literally the hardest launch I've ever seen in my entire life in front of stadiums full of thousands and thousands of people to say you love them. And then a week later, they say the exact same thing. Like, that, that's, that's not like a cryptic message. That is very forward, actually. Which I hope someone would be that forward with me. So um, I think they're 100% dating. Like that confirmed 
all the rumors to me, 100%. After one of her performances, they were caught like in the car together going to her condo, like duh, because they're dating. So here's the thing. I am like not like a self-proclaimed Swifty as I've just made known, but I love pop culture and I like obviously like know a lot about her. I stay up to date and I just really did not see this coming because I do not see her and Maddie Healy together at all. I don't see that being her type. I don't see her being his type. Like, he just broke up with FKA Twigs in 2022. So, like, FKA Twigs, I feel like, is his type. You know, more, like, artsy, tortured artist, very creative, whatever. Um, me, he, he. I don't really see Matt Healy dating that. And I need to let that go, but I won't. And I don't see her really dating someone who's, like, known to be, like, you know, has done drugs, is, like, you know, maybe an alcoholic, is making out with girls at his concerts in the front row, um, that's not really her type. But they do say opposites attract. So that's where my intrigue comes in because how forward they're being about it and how they, you know, have these public displays of affection already happening is really making me excited because if there's one thing I love, even if I don't like you, if you put your relationship or your business out there to be critiqued or not even critiqued, just entertained, to be absorbed, respect, major respect because we got nothing about her last relationship nothing about her last boyfriend so you know pe pe people are telling this source that they're like so not about to hide this relationship they're so ready to be public and they're madly in love and yada 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 so i'm gonna here for it i'm ready to see some paparazzi photos i'm ready to see them maybe on a red carpet maybe perform together people were alluding that they were maybe going to perform together um while he was in nashville but they did not but it got close he did the guitar for one of her openers phoebe bridgers so kind of close enough i'm sure they were backstage canoodling giving a little kiss good luck before she hit stage so yeah i'm very intrigued and i'm very excited i also love the 1975 i've seen the 1975 a million times i've seen them at coachella i saw them at one of their first i think maybe if not their first tour in LA like years and years and years ago Japanese house opened which you guys know I love the Japanese house they were one of my song of the weeks forever ago and they're about to come out with a new album and I'm so excited but um they were the opener and that's actually how I found the Japanese house I'm excited about this I love the 1975 I love Maddie Healy I love his vibe I do not picture him with Taylor but maybe maybe this will like edge up Taylor a little bit and make me like her a little bit more so I'm intrigued and this has won me some Taylor points also let it be known this is not the first time that they've dated they dated previously in, I think, like, 2014. Briefly. Briefly. It just didn't, you know, the timing didn't line up. The another point that Miss Swifty has won me over on this last weekend is her dedication to her fans and her performance. Swarms of concertgoers who showed up to Nashville's Nissan Stadium on Sunday for night three of the Pop Stars Eras Tour were forced to shelter in place for close to four hours hours due to severe stormy weather. An attendee told Page Six that the restless crowd had to remain under covered areas of the otherwise outdoor stadium. Artists, no more outdoor stadiums. Like, we got to quit with that. Lady Gaga's was outdoor. I don't like it. There was a net. We've heard that whole story on the podcast and how miserable it was. No, go indoors. Like, go indoors. I don't want to have to see the sun. If the sun is up, I don't want to have to deal with rain. Like, why are we, why are we doing this outdoors? I don't know. Anyways, so they were placed into a forced shelter around 540 and had to remain there until movement at 930. Um, Taylor Swift eventually took the stage just after 10 p.m. and performed until nearly 2 a.m. It was originally supposed to run from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. So here's the thing. Mad respect because most other artists 100% would have just canceled the show and she was probably well within her means to cancel the show and not get fined because it was weather and she was forced to, but she was aware of that, you know, people would have rather waited and people spent so much money, thousands of dollars to go to this concert and hotels and traveled and all of that. And so she came out and performed and let it be known when she performed at 10 PM, it was still pouring rain. Like, I think the lightning maybe warning had gone away, so that's why she was able to perform, but it was still pouring rain, and claps for Taylor. Like, that is mad respect. She looked almost more beautiful in the rain than in the other footage I've seen of the concert. The concert looked so magical, and just like, uh, I don't know, I loved it. It looked, it, 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 once again, like I said, points for Taylor. Matty Healy, and dancing at 2 a.m. in the pouring rain. Win-win. She's growing on me. Maybe, maybe I'm in my Taylor era. I take back what I said earlier. Maybe I'm in my, maybe I'm in my Thai version. 
doesn't hit the same as Taylor's version. It doesn't. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to hear us speak now. It was a big weekend for Taylor fans. So Swifties, I'm just checking in on you. Are you okay? And I'm there for you. And I apologize for everything I said earlier. And I'll put some respect on her name because this bitch is a performer. She's an artist. She's a mother. Not to a child, but to you. <laughs> okay, so also... When I posted on my Instagram story what stories you guys wanted me to cover, I wasn't going to cover this one, but so many people wanted me to cover it. So let's get into it. Robert De Niro, who will be 80, 80 years old in August, just announced the birth of his seventh child with much younger girlfriend, Tiffany Chen. And I scoured the internet to find out how old Tiffany Chen is, and I cannot find it anywhere. Props to her for getting that off of the internet, and maybe props to him because... That would make the story a little bit more interesting, but I've seen photos of her and that bitch is young. She's not 80 and she's still able to bear a child. So she's not 80. Let's just do the math there. Even if she's 40, that's half, half, 20 years older, Four, 40 years older, 40, 40 years older. So um, there's that. If you don't know who Robert De Niro is, he's been in The Joker, Meet the Parents, Meet the Foggers, Shark Tale, House of Gucci, so many others, but that's what I know him from. He's like a huge actor. If you saw a photo of him, you would definitely know who it is. Why are we out here having children at eight years old? Robert. That's, that's not okay. De Niro has seven children with four different women. I'm not going to sex shame anyone. Do your thing. But I hope he's, I don't know how he is. I don't really know that much about his personal life. I hope he's like involved in all of the kids' lives and that he's a good dad. From what I read, it seems like he is. His oldest daughter, Drina De Niro, is 51 years older than his youngest child. My mom's 51. That's like my mother having another child right now. No, 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 no. That's like my mother having a baby sister right now. Jail. Jail. Grandma, if you're listening to this, do not even think about it. You are not having another child. That's just not okay. That's not okay. We there needs to be a there needs to be an age law, a restriction on how old you can be when you have a child. Because let's put it into perspective. When this child that he just had graduates from college, Robert De Niro will be 102. You're not thinking about the child because now that child is gonna have to grow up without a dad. That's so sad. I'm sorry, when you're 80, it could be any day. Death is knock, knock, knocking at your door. Even if you live to 100, that's a stretch. And it's like, okay, so you're gonna die when your kid's in high school? That's so traumatizing. That's so sad. You're gonna miss so many. You're already, already gonna miss your son's wedding, your son's like everything. Like you're, you're not gonna be able to meet your grandchildren. So it just feels a little selfish. I don't know. I don't know. This maybe is like I don't know. It just is like why? Like what's what's the point? How is your sperm still swimming that fast? How's it getting there? There's some men on this earth who's like um, Nick Cannon. He has like twelve children. There are some men who's just, and maybe their their goal is just multiply and replenish the earth. They should join the Mormon church because they would be very well accepted there. And they would be highly praised <laughs> for their work and their effort in multiplying and replenishing the earth. But someone like him, I'm just like, you're so rich. Maybe that's why he doesn't care. He's not taking care of the kid. He has a nanny and he's got plenty of money. So, okay, great. Have another kid. Why not? But it just feels like, why? Like, you already have seven kids. It's not like you're not, not leaving a legacy behind. You don't have anyone to pass your life on to. You probably already have grandchildren. It just is like a raise for concern. Maybe the girlfriend was trying to secure the bag. Maybe she was trying to get in the will in case they didn't get married. That's, that's sounding the most likely option. I don't know. Congratulations to the lucky couple on the newborn baby. You're 80. That's like my grandpa having a kid. I don't even think my grandpa's 80, honestly. I don't know how old he is. Maybe he's 80. I don't think he is. I think my grandpa's like in his like mid-70s. 80 years old. Also, I'm just thinking about, I'm too tired right now to have a kid. Let alone when I'm 80. Like, don't you just want to relax? Don't you want to, you're rich. Don't you want to just go on a yacht? Like I said, it's probably because he has an 80. He doesn't even raise it. But I'm just like thinking, when I get to 80... I want to be in a nursing home with Jose Figueroa and JC and Teza and Billy. God bless if all of our spouses are passed away. They can be there too if they want, but that's the bare minimum. Um, I want to be having glasses of wine. I want to be playing bingo. 
if I'm blessed to be as rich enough as Robert De Niro, I would love to be on a yacht. I would love to be retired in Italy somewhere on the coast, the Amalfi Coast maybe. It's a little touristy, so maybe somewhere else. But, you know, there are a lot of other options. There are a lot of other um, life paths that I can think that I hope to be doing at 80 years old. And having my seventh child is not one of those paths in which I hope to be moving forward on. So congrats to Robert. I hope he's happy. I hope it's a beautiful baby. I hope the baby's happy, healthy. I know it's already wealthy. Probably more wealthy than I'll ever be. Anyways, that is Ty's top three stories of the week. Before we go, I want to also do a new little segment called Ty TV, where we discuss things that I've been watching this week and kind of go over it. I feel like this will be easier to organize the pop culture episodes. I feel like normally like the housewives and drag race and everything is just kind of mixed in with the pop culture news. And I feel like it's just going to be easier to separate the two between like news and like episodes that are aired or like what we're watching. So let's get into a little bit of Thai TV. This week is a little bit shorter. I haven't really been watching too much, but I started for the first time Bravo's Summer House and I'm loving it. It is so entertaining. I'm on season like three, episode two, and I'm obsessed. It's so good. It is just like all these New Yorkers who go to the Hamptons or Montauk, whichever, I don't know, um, for like the summer. They go on the weekends and it's just like a bunch of adults getting drunk, relationship drama, sleeping with each other. And it makes me feel a lot better about my life and my feral ratness activities because I don't go as hard as they do. And I don't say out as late as they do sometimes. Um, so it makes me feel a lot better about my life and where I'm at, especially because some of them are like in their mid thirties. So if I'm doing that at 26, I'm good. So I highly recommend watching that. I am obsessed with Kyle. I, like I said, I'm only on season three, so I don't know how, like what the latest is. If you guys are, are like all caught up on that, what people think of him. I don't know what the fan reaction or the audience reaction to him, but I love him. I think he's so funny, so entertaining. I love Carl. I feel like they give him such a hard time. The twins were like so rude to him and like bullied him. This season, he's been a lot better. He's definitely had a lot of growth. What else am I watching? The Real Housewives of Atlanta. The new season premiered on Sunday night and I watched it. It was definitely very good for like a premiere episode. However, I I don't know. I'm not like obsessed with anyone on the cast anymore. My girl, Kim Zolciak, is off of it. Nene Leakes is obviously iconic and entertaining. Portia Williams was one of my favorite forever. I'm glad they have Sheree back. I mean, Cynthia's gone. I mean, like, all, all the good people are gone. So... It's still entertaining. I still watch it. I, you know, Kenya's growing on me. I love Candy. The new girls. I mean, Drew, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it'll be a really good season. Nothing like gagged me in the premiere. I felt like that girl, Courtney, or whoever like attacked Candy at that party was like totally thirsty and totally just wanting camera time and wanted to get her taste of the peach. And Candy was not having it, which I was really happy about. But I'm excited to see next episode and Kenya really go in on Sheree's new boo. I feel like that'll be really entertaining, but I don't know. We'll see. I have high hopes for the season. So we'll stay tuned for upcoming episodes of Thai TV and we will go deeper into Real Housewives of Atlanta. Drag Race is over, but Drag Race All Stars starts this weekend. So I'm really excited about that. If you guys did not watch last season with me and you guys want to hop in, this is one of the best seasons to hop in at. RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars. So it's queens that have already competed on past seasons um, who, you know, maybe have grown so much since they've been on the show. Now come back and compete. So it's guaranteed to be a good season. Like they're guaranteed to be already seasoned, already good. It's a little bit different format than the regular seasons. So if you guys want to hop in and watch it with me, I'll definitely be recapping that in Thai TV segments um, to come. So if you guys want to know what I'm talking about, make sure you tune on in. Anyways, I'll end it on that. I know that was like a little short, sweet Thai TV because I haven't been watching things that are like super current. So it doesn't really feel that relevant. I mean, other than, I mean... Do we even want to get into Vanderpump Rules? I don't even think there's much to say. I feel like I'll do a bigger recap on that after the season finale, which I think is this week. So maybe next week, Thai TV, buckle up because there'll be a lot to discuss. Um, anyways, love you guys so much. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode or watching this week's episode. If you watched it on YouTube, please give this a thumbs up. Please subscribe. 
Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. I am so nervous about this. Thank you so much for 250,000 downloads. It made my weekend and I've just been smiling so big ever since. And I can't believe that you guys listen to me for an hour every day. And I feel so awkward doing this, but I love you guys so much. And thank you so much for DMing me and following me on Instagram. Please follow at Thai French Podcast. It helps me so much. Please leave a rate and review in the Apple Podcast or Spotify app. Subscribe on uh, YouTube. I really got to get used to like <laughs> doing all this at the end because there's so much to cover. But anyways, I would say I'll see you next week, but I'll see you on Friday. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening, listening and stay tuned for next week. <laughs>